uh, to be discovered as the lesson goes on. I'm going to be doing this lesson with Curtis. Uh, let me invite him over here. Uh, there we go. Hi, Curtis. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Amy. How are you? I'm doing really well. Okay, right. so we have uh, the two of us. We're going to be explaining the different things in the lesson. And before we get started, um, let's see here. Oh, we have a few people that are watching already. I can see them here in the chat area. Hi, everybody. If you're watching right now, please send us a message. Tell us your name and where you're from. I can see, for example, uh, <laughs> Rubio02 is Veronica. We have Alessandro that's here. And a name I can't read because it's not in English characters, but um, hello, you know who you are. <laughs> and um, Afzal is here and has been here for a while. So hello, everybody. Welcome to the lesson. We're excited to have you here. With this lesson, this is going to be an interactive lesson. I want everybody to be ready with their keyboard or if you're on your cell phone, get your keyboard ready on your phone. We're going to have a lot of activities that you can do to practice the phrasal verbs with us. So don't be shy, send your answers and try to use these phrasal verbs with some short, simple sentences that uh, we can look at, for example, and if we see that there's a common mistake that people are making, we can help you guys, give you some corrections and do some different activities like that. Okay, we've got a few more people here. We've got Samuel um, Dawid uh, from Poland, um, Mauricio. Okay, cool. We've got a few people here, a few members that are here with us from our website. Okay. And um, okay, so before we get started, I'm just going to show you how you can get the lesson notes for today's lesson. Okay. One second. Amy has to go into technical land here. Okay. <laughs> I think it's just, no, wrong button. There we go. <laughs> Okay, so what you need to do here is you can come over to our website. If you're already a member, you're going to go into this area here. It says logged out because I'm obviously logged in here as the admin, but there'll be a login button here. And if you're a member already, you can log into this area. And even if you're a free member and your membership has expired, then you can still log in and you're going to be able to access the member freebies, which are in the My Account area. To register for a free account, all you need to do is go to this button here, pretty straightforward. And if you decide that you want to join us as a member to join our awesome community, some of which we have here in the lesson with us that I'm sure are going to be participating, uh, you can sign up as a premium member here. This is going to give you access to all of the courses. And I think we have 14 courses in total. They're all related to improving your speaking and listening skills for real world communication with really efficient learning techniques. So uh, as you can see here, we have a coupon code right now, stay at home. Obviously related to the COVID-19 problem, we have a lot of people that are at home, but we also recognize that the US dollar right now is really expensive for a lot of people. So we wanted to offer a little bit of a discount. And Curtis, what about you? I see here we have a special promotion for you related to private lessons. Um, what are, can you tell us a little bit about yourself as a teacher? <laughs> yes, I'm one of the teachers here at Real English Conversations and I started to provide a lot of private lessons to give you guys extra help with your English during this time and going into the future and forward as well. And because of this, I wanted to offer a special discount as well uh, for, for you guys. I think I'm offering about 10% off. I, my yeah, screen this, switched over. So uh, yeah, yeah. This mm -hmm. is uh, related to the packages. You can get another 10%. So if you mm -hmm. get a package of 20, it's a 20% 
percent discount already, and this is an extra ten percent. So if you got some free time and you want one-to-one -one help, uh, Curtis has a special offer right now. Um, for me, unfortunately, I am totally full with my lesson, so I'm unable to accept students. But I think Curtis has space for maybe two or three more people. Mm -hmm. so Definitely, and I love to help people out with phrasal verbs, expressions, and pronunciation as well. Okay, so one more thing here. Let me just show you in the my account area. One second, it's just loading. Because, you know, everyone in Mexico is probably <laughs> on the internet right now. So you can see here, you can go to the latest member freebies. And this is going to be a button that is available for everybody that has a registered account on our website. And from here, you're going to be able to get the lesson that we're going to be sharing today. So one second again. Okay, Curtis, let's go back to the screen here. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me do this. Sorry, guys, it just takes me a second or two to switch between the screens. Okay. Okay, here we go. So we have a list of 20 phrasal verbs that we've planned out for you guys. We've got lots of examples and we're going to be giving you some activities so that you can challenge yourself to try to use these phrasal verbs. And the first one that we're going to do is act out, okay? And Curtis, how are we going to be explaining these phrasal verbs to the people today? Well, we're going to give demonstrations, almost like charades or uh, yeah, acting out actual phrasal verbs and, and how you can see visually what these phrasal mm -hmm. verbs are, just to test your knowledge and things like that. Yeah, exactly. We're going to be doing movements like an actor to try to explain these phrasal verbs. So mm -hmm. act out. Phrasal verb number one. That one's actually tricky to try to use as an example. I tried to think of a couple of examples and it was quite difficult. So uh, the one that we have here, Curtis, would you be able to uh, read the example sentence? Okay, uh, the example sentence is, we played a game called charades uh, where one person selects a card with a phrase and then they have to make other players guess what the words are without speaking by acting out the actions and the movements. And so that's the first sentence there. Exactly. So you actually mentioned charades as you were trying to explain it uh, free flowing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. We've got a few more people joining us here. Hello, everybody that's joining us uh, today in this lesson. Uh, please don't be shy, leave a comment, introduce yourself. And actually, if you're joining this lesson afterwards, after it's finished, Leave a comment below the video, say hello. Feel free to post your answer in the comments of the video. And one favor to ask from everybody right now, click that thumbs up button and like this video, please. It really helps us uh, to have this video seen by more people. Okay, so mm. let's get started. We are going to start with these four phrasal verbs just to explain the basic concepts about phrasal verbs, especially related to movement, okay? So as you can see here on the screen, the first one is look up, and then we've got look down, look around, and look over. And what I want you to really focus on right now is the preposition that's being used after the, the first verb. So a phrasal verb is actually a verb plus a preposition like this. And these are going to mean an action. In this case, these types of phrasal verbs are pretty self-explanatory, but people still have a difficult time using them. And these ones are best to be demonstrated with movement. So let's start with the first one, Curtis, for okay. look up, okay? Can you show us what look up looks like? Okay, so as you can see there, Curtis had his head up, his direction of his view was mm -hmm. up, okay. And uh, Curtis, how could you use look up to describe what you were doing just then? Okay, what I was doing was I was actually looking up at my fan. My okay. fan on my ceiling, I was looking up at it to make sure it was still working. 
Okay. And as you can see here, we're putting the examples into this document that you guys are going to have access to to review after. Okay. Now, um, what about look down? What does look down look like? Okay, look down. Okay. Now, I want you guys to write in the comment area, what do you think, Curtis, <laughs> Careful where you're looking. What do you think Curtis is looking <laughs> down at? <laughs> okay. Or, for example, what am I looking down at? Okay. Try mm -hmm. to guess what we were looking at and leave an example in the chat box to practice. Okay. Now, Curtis, what were you looking at? I was looking at my feet. Okay. My feet were on the floor are okay. on the floor they still are <laughs> okay so curtis was looking at his feet okay now um what about around when we use this this phrasal verb around uh what does that look like or what does around represent when it's used with a phrasal verb okay so Okay, so Curtis is moving his head and he's looking around like a circle, we could say. Okay, and around is used a lot of times in English in this way that it's not really a specific area like a circle, but it's a, a general area. So mm -hmm. when we're looking around, we're moving our head back and forth like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, when you look around, okay, what do you see? So you can say an, an example, for example, Curtis, when you look around, what do you see? I see some paintings on the wall, a nice va vase. Uh, well, I guess you can't see, but uh, you can, I was looking around at my plant and uh, some of the walls around here that have nice decorations. So I was just kind of looking around at things and items in, in my office. Okay, perfect. And uh, so let's add that to the document here. Uh, Curtis was looking around at some items in his office, okay? So for you guys to participate and try to use look around right now, I just want you to type your answer. What do you see when you look around the room that you're in right now? Maybe you can give one or two items. Okay, and the last one, just for the easy examples here, okay? Uh, the last one that we're going to look at is look over. This actually has two meanings. Um, Curtis, can you explain what look over might mean? Mm -hmm. So it could mean to look over in a specific direction or look over your shoulder. Uh, I'm looking over at my door there. And then the other meaning is to review something. So when I'm studying Spanish and I've got my notebook here and I want to review, I'm going to look over my notes to make sure I don't forget uh, my Spanish for my next lesson with my teacher. So I'll just look over my notes and, and review them. Uh, okay, perfect. And uh, Curtis, I can see the back of your laptop. You might want to just raise oh. your... Um, camera a little bit so that when we get to some of the cool uh, activities, we're not hiding behind your laptop. Ah, hiding behind, look at that. <laughs> New one. <laughs> okay, I knew there would be some extra ones that uh, came up. So we have a few examples here from some of our students. So let's take a look here. Alessandro says, I am looking down my floor. Okay, is there something missing from Alessandro's example here, Curtis? Uh, let me see Alessandro's example. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, here, that's I'm looking down my floor. What is missing from that is at uh -huh. my I'm floor. looking down at my floor. And this is a really common uh, mistake that I would see from my students. So I thought that would be a good example. And uh, sorry, Curtis, I probably caught you off guard. I can see the um, uh, admin panel right now. Maybe you can't see the comments, no? Oh yeah, I can, yeah. I can see the but comments. In the chat? 
in the not in on the, the screen. Yeah, I can see them on the screen in the live oh, okay. comments section. Yeah. Okay, perfect, mm -hmm. perfect. I um, have one I that's to, highlighted. I just have to. I had to scroll up. Oh no! Okay, this means that you can't see it on the the screen that I'm showing right now. Okay. It's a different view for me as the admin. So let's hide Alessandro's comment. It's my I first time. It. Like, it doesn't matter. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we won't discuss technical <laughs> difficulties. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> this is my first time doing a shared uh, live stream using this new software. So I'm not actually sure what Curtis can see as an inv uh, invited guest to this. Okay. Um, so let's see here. We've got, um, okay, we have um, Michi0315, okay. It says, Curtis is looking around to, to find something he missed. And Curtis, how would you modify this sentence? Curtis is looking around to find something he missed. What do you think they would like to say here? Uh, Curtis is looking around to find something I'm missing. Missing, exactly. So Curtis is, I'm going to type this in the chat here, looking around to find something he is missing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's lost an item and he's looking for it. Okay, perfect. And um, let's see. So we've got one more example that we need to cover from no, we already did this. Look over. We haven't practiced it, though. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, when everybody here watching, I want you to look over your shoulder right now. Okay? I'm looking over my right shoulder. When I look over my shoulder, I see something. It's right there. <laughs> and um, Curtis, what about you? When you look over your shoulder, what do you see? I see my plant. Okay. Looking and over you, my left shoulder, I see my plant. Okay. And I want everybody here to say what they see when they look over their shoulder and leave the answer in the chat. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the next part where we're actually going to be doing uh, some more interesting ones that use different verbs. This one here, I really wanted to show you guys just up, down, round. And over. Over is like a sideways uh, direction usually. So for example, if you have a colleague that's on the other side of the office, you might walk over to them. Okay, this is how over is used in this way. All right, here we go. So now we get to use the props. This is fun. <laughs> okay. I am going to act out one of these phrasal verbs. Actually, I'm going to stop sharing this screen right now because we're going to challenge you guys to guess some things. Okay, just before we get started here, I'm just going to feature a couple of comments and give some corrections. So, okay, hang on. So we've got here, I can see my bedroom, okay? Um, so we've got Fodal, he wrote a comment or she wrote a comment. I'm not sure, I can't tell by the name. But here, I want you guys to make sure that you use the phrasal verb. So I look over my shoulder and I can see my bedroom. The phrasal verb is the most important thing that we use here. But that's good. You look over your shoulder, you see your bedroom. Okay, let's see here. And here's another one. So I can see a calendar if I look around. Good. And, um, oh, <laughs> Mauricio has his wife looking at him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wonder if his wife speaks English. Mauricio, does your wife know what you're listening to and what you're doing right now? You're in an English lesson. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And hey, mm -hmm. just a little correction on that one. Sorry to interrupt. Mm -hmm. My wife is looking at me. Mm. Good point. And this right here is evidence that even native speakers, sometimes even teachers, don't notice little things that are missing. We really capture the general idea that people are saying when they're speaking. And sometimes if a little word is missing, we just don't even notice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let's see. So 
Um, oh, here's <laughs> Mauricio's second answer. When I'm looking around, I see my wife staring at me. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, what are you doing, Mauricio? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And okay. Let's see one more here. If I look over my shoulder, I can see the heating. Hmm. How would we change this one a little bit? Do you think we have to guess a little bit? What do you think they're trying to say with heating? The I heater? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you were asking me. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. If I look over my shoulder, I can see my heater. Mm, yeah. Or okay. So the heater. I can see the heater. Okay. So they probably live in a cold climate in this case. Okay. Good. Awesome. So let's get going with the next one. Hopefully, the screen has been gone long enough that you guys can't remember what the upcoming <laughs> phrasal verbs are. Okay, Curtis, so we're going to be using put on, okay? And okay. this is to wear something or apply something to another object. And that sounds really weird, that type of explanation. And this is why acting and showing you guys what putting on means is probably the better way. So what do you have to put on to show us how this works? Okay. I think that hat is a little bit too small to go over headphones, but um, okay. Can everybody write in the comments what Curtis just put on? Okay, try to use the phrasal verb. And uh, this one can be used two different ways, right? How can you explain what you're, what you're wearing right now, Curtis? <laughs> I'm wearing a hat uh, that okay. I, yeah that I bought here in Mexico just to not have the sun burn my face a little bit. Of okay. Extra. And what yeah. did you just do? I put it on my head. Uh, okay. And um, so you put it, the hat. Okay. The I hat. put the hat on my head. Okay. And mm -hmm. can we say I put on my hat? Yeah. I put on my hat. I put my hat on my head. Yeah. Yeah. I put okay. I put I put the hat on my head. I put my hat on my head. Yep. If it belongs to me. Mm -hmm. And Curtis has just put on his hat. That is also correct. So you can see this phrasal verb can separate or you can keep it together and put the object after. No problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I want you guys to guess. I have an example as well of something that I'm going to put on. And this is exclusively for the quarantine period. And I think it's the new fashion trend. Ooh. <laughs> I had to just move my headphones back or take it off. Okay. So <laughs> you guys, you tell me what I just put on. Okay. No. Okay. There we go. I have... <laughs> this is the latest fashion. As you can see, it's skin color. I hope you can hear me okay. <laughs> You're good. So, good, good. So what did I just put on? Do you guys know what this is called? I'm sure if you've been reading some news in English, you guys know what it's called. But um, yeah, we just put on different objects. So let's look at our, our notes here. Okay, here we, whoops, put on is to wear or apply something to another object. Like you can put, um, I don't know, if I have my cup and I have some tape, I could put the tape on the cup. So that's what I mean with apply. But um, what's the example that we have here, Curtis? The example is I have to put on a sweater because it's chilly outside. Okay. And what does chilly mean? A lot of people don't know this word. Uh, what does this mean? Chilly means cold. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So it's a cold. little bit cold, like not freezing cold, but uh, it's chilly outside. Okay. And 
Now, guys, we've got a few answers here, and I'm excited to get to the next phrasal verbs be because I don't want to wear this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Samantha says, you put on a mask. Perfect, this is a face mask, and uh, yeah, we've got another one here. Amy has just put on a facial mask, exactly. Nice. And Omar as well, uh, you have, instead of has, put the face mask on your face. Great. So now, what about the hat? Oh yeah, I think I forgot to mention this. So Curtis has just put on his hat. Uh, Curtis put the hat on his head. These are great. You guys totally have this. So if you feel like practicing more, maybe you can pick up an object around and put it on you or put it on a surface. Like, um, I don't know what I have around, but if I had my remote control and it was over here, maybe I wanted to put it on my desk, okay? And that's how I can use it. Okay, next one. So, Curtis, mm -hmm. do you know what the next one is without saying it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. I do. Yeah. Okay, so, good. Yeah. Go ahead. Show us. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I Go ahead. Had, had my hat on. I put my hat on my head before. And now, should I give the answer? Are you all mm. waiting? In, yeah? I, no? I think we need a few people to guess. What did Curtis okay. just do? I'm going to give you guys a hint. It's using the verb take. Okay. And there's a preposition after. So we need to guess. It takes about 10 seconds for the, the chat, chat to chat. catch up. So yeah. we're not going to give you the answer. We're going to see who knows this one. So we put something on and we, ah, Omar, here we go, or Umar. We take off. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we've got here, so Jose Curtis put his hat off. That's an excellent guess because you would think that it's the opposite. But in this case, we have to change the verb. So we take or remove the, the hat. Now, please, can somebody tell me to, to take off this? <laughs> okay. So Amy, dun, 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 your mask, please write it in the chat. <laughs> right. I like what uh, Mich Michio0315 said. It's the past tense. So I already took off my hat. Exactly. I have to give you a thumbs up on that one for using the past tense on there. Yeah, and if it was happening right now, like Curtis, can you demonstrate happening right now? Putting on. Okay. I'm putting okay. on my hat. Yeah. Now I'm taking T off. Taking my hat. off. Exactly. Okay. Thank goodness I have some people telling me to take my mask off. Okay. <laughs> It's there hot under there. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to the summertime and having to wear a mask while we do our shopping. It's very hot here. Yeah. Okay. Now, next one. Let's okay. see. Um, okay. So um, do you know what it is, Curtis? Can you give me some instructions? Yep. Uh, the next one is, um, yes. Uh, you can explain it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something mm -hmm. that's uh, inside another object, and it's the action of that object being inside. Um, so we're moving something from outside to inside. Yes. Yeah, so okay. what? Yeah. I have some props here. Okay. Uh -huh. This is a really cute backpack that I bought. And as you guys can see, it has this beautiful embroidery. It kind of looks like an owl, which is why I bought it. But for example, um, what is the phrasal verb that we're talking about here? Okay, we're talking about put in. Okay. So let's pretend that I go shopping and I don't want to wear my mask in the store, which would be a bad idea. But when I'm finished, I take my mask like this and I'm going to 
Okay, there it is, inside. So what did I just do with this mask? Type in the comments what I did. It's this action, okay? Let's see here. And what's the next one? Well, we're uh, working on this same concept. What's the next phrasal verb, Curtis? Okay, the next one is when you remove. Mm -hmm. Phrasal verb? <laughs> yeah, the phrasal verb is take out. I thought we were okay. being like secretive here. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, we had to teach it first. <laughs> okay. okay, okay. Put in take out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now I want to remove this or take it out. So I'm going to take the mask out of the backpack. Okay. Now, um, Curtis, I want you to demonstrate this. So what do you have okay. around to demonstrate? Okay, I'm gonna demonstrate the first one, okay? Mm -hmm. So here we go, I'll take my headset off here. Ooh, take okay. off. Okay, so he has some water in a jar. And his plant that he's mentioned a few times. Okay, so the water uh, is in the plant now. Can you guys guess what action Curtis was just doing? Can you explain that using some of the phrasal verbs that we've just learned here? Can uh -huh. you write the answer about what just happened? So Curtis yeah. took the water. Okay, hang on, they're guessing. Don't say it, Curtis. Right. You didn't mm -hmm. have your headset on. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, you have the water and you have the plant, and we need to, um, you know, mm, this water, mm, the plant. Okay. So let's see here. Uh, oh, here's an example. I put my books inside the bag, that probably is. I think this is a cell phone typo. <laughs> okay, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> and um, you put your mask inside your backpack. Awesome. Okay, let's see here. We got our first guess. He takes down the water in the plant. Almost. Almost. Let's see. Oh, we got poor. This is the correct verb for sure. Let's see going to wait. I'm going to see if someone else can guess it. Oh, oh. oh. Yeah, yeah, here yeah. we go. Okay. Curtis took the water and put some water in the plant. Bravo. Okay. And we have here, he put the water in the plant. Good job. So this is put in to take something mm. and put it inside something else. In this case, it's the plant pot, I guess. Okay. So um, now we're going to do another little quiz using the five phrasal verbs that we just taught you guys, which is going to be put on, take off, put in, take out. Oh, we haven't taught the last one. Sorry, I can't count today. Maybe I need more coffee. <laughs> We've got one more to teach you guys, and then we're going to do a quiz. But we're just going to be okay. acting, and then you guys have to guess what we're trying to do. So the last and final one is pick up okay mm -hmm. and i have an example i left this item on the floor specifically for this example so let's see <laughs> if i can do this and there we go oh okay i might oh. have to disconnect my headset one second i don't know if it's long enough let's see if i can reach okay so we're gonna go over here and I have this item. Why is there a plate on the floor? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is what I just <laughs> picked up. Um, the plate is on the floor because we have three cats and one of our cats is a little bit older and our two cats are younger and they eat. Actually, here's another uh, phrasal verb. Do you know which phrasal verb it is with pig, Curtis? What do our two little boys when they eat? What do they do? <laughs> they pig out. <laughs> <laughs> so to pig out, 
is to eat a lot of food. <laughs> okay. A lot. Mm -hmm. And this one here. Um, so to pig out, we worry about the boys coming in, not only eating their food, but also eating her food. Mm -hmm. So I put this plate on the floor and here's the quiz right now because we've already no hang on we haven't taught this one but it's coming might as well teach it now okay so i take this plate with the food and i put it Ooh. okay i put it down on the floor for the cat and just now what i did i'm going to use the the verb pick and up so I picked it up. I picked up the plate. Okay. That's my prop. So now we have taught you guys five phrasal verbs here, and we're going to test your knowledge to make sure that you know what they are when you see them in action. So Curtis, your turn. Mm -hmm. You're going to create the activity. I have no idea what you're going to do. So the <laughs> phrasal <laughs> verbs that we're going to use are, okay, so put on. Mm -hmm. take, take off. off. What are the other ones? Uh, put, in, put take in, up. take out, pick up. Okay, pick up. I think that's all of them, right? Put on. That's, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I okay. like this one. They freak out the oldest cat. Yeah, you're right. The, the boys, <laughs> they freak out the oldest cat and she doesn't eat enough if we don't separate her. So you're right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Nice. So, okay, Curtis, which one? Um, can you show us one of these phrasal verbs? And everybody has to try to guess which one it is. Okay. Uh... Yeah, let me go full screen here. Okay, here we go. What is that? <laughs> we we are totally surprising each other with our props, our our objects that we're acting out with yeah. these phrasal verbs. So this is like a Christmas tree ornament decoration <laughs> that you hang on the tree at Christmas time. Ah, uh, yeah, and we have those out right now because last week one of the vases or I don't know containers that we had it uh, fell and we had these Christmas balls or the ornaments in it and they now are in a basket <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so there we are we have our first guesses we've got take out yes Curtis is taking the Christmas ball out of his hat good and job we have also got yeah take out something or take something out Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So, uh, and here we are. Amy picked the cat's plate up to put more food in or put more food on the plate. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy with these phrasal verbs because you can say pick, blah, 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 up. So it can be a little bit difficult to spot these phrasal verbs when they have a bunch of information in the middle. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yes, Curtis took out an ornament from his hat. Okay. What is the next one that you can try to get them to guess? Okay. The next one is... <laughs> That's a good look. At I least like he that. chose a towel that matches his shirt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, if you can explain with a full sentence what Curtis just did. Let's see. Okay. And while they're guessing the first one, okay, mm -hmm. so you just something, you just a towel. Okay. Mm, something, your head. Okay. So mm -hmm. what's another one? So the first one was to take out. The second one, okay. we're waiting for the guesses to come in. But the third action, what is it going to be? Okay. Mm -hmm. So there we are. We can maybe make one sentence that this happened and then this happened. Okay, perfect. So let's see here. 
We've got some answers coming in. Curtis puts the towel on his head. Exactly. And for this one, I would probably say Curtis is putting the towel on his head uh, just because it's an action that's happening right there or he put the towel on his head. Okay. And okay. Facial towel. Actually, you know what? This is a, well, it'd be hard to identify, but we would call this a hand towel hand towel, or in this case, you can't really tell, but this is our dish towel. So <laughs> I guess it could be used for a hand after you, you know, wash your hands for 20 seconds and then. Yeah. And you dry it, dry off your hands. Dry actually. off your hands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, <laughs> somebody even said it was a blue towel. Good. Okay. Let's yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I can see that. Where is Curtis it? Just put oh, a yeah. blue towel on his head. Curtis oh, yeah. put a blue towel on over his head. Yeah, you could do over his oh, head. Put over. But why do we have towels around us? I don't even know. Okay, I also have often this <laughs> beside <laughs> me, and I use it as a prop to explain phrasal verbs all the time. So um, for this one, if we put it over uh, the head, it can mean like this. Okay, but it could also mean like this. Okay, so it's over meaning I'm under the towel and it's over. So um, this can mean above or over. It's a little mm -hmm. bit flexible uh, sometimes with these phrasal verbs. Okay, perfect. It yeah. seems like you guys got it. So um, a facial towel. Yeah, this is more like a facial towel, the ones that are square like this. They're small. We call them face cloths actually in English. So face cloth or a cleaning towel. For me, I like these ones. They're a microfiber cloth. I like using them as a face cloth, but you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, great. You guys definitely have this under control. So let's move on to the next set of five. Okay, Curtis, do you want to um, maybe explain these ones and I'll do some of the actions? Okay. Uh, the next set of five. There we go. Um, okay, so the next one is to place an object in a lower location. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will give you the phrasal verb, right? Yeah, explain the phrasal verb. Okay, the phrasal verb is put down. So put down is to place something mm -hmm. in a lower location. It might be at the floor, it might be table might be a chair mm -hmm. and uh, an example here in the sentence is let me put down these bags so i can open the door and if you guys remember what did i do with this plate it had uh, food on it cat food and i had to put down to the floor oh. yeah i had to put it down on the floor Okay, so we already learned this one. So let's move on to the second one. Okay, so the second one is turn off. So this okay. is to stop or to deactivate an electronic device or something like that. And mm -hmm. uh, so can you turn off the tap? Yeah, turn off the tap. This is actually really, really common. And the tap is the the thing where the water comes out. So when you need to wash your hands, for example, you are washing your hands and to do that, you need to turn on the tap, right? And then what do you do when you want to stop the water? You turn it off. Mm -hmm. We turn it off and then we stop the water. So it can be used for water in this way. You can use it for your garden hose. You can use it for washing your dishes, washing your hands, having a shower, anything to start or stop the water. What mm -hmm. about for electronics? Can you give us a couple of examples with the electronics? Yeah, sure. I've got my beautiful cell phone here. And mm -hmm. so I'm going to turn it off because I don't want it to distract me. Mm -hmm. So it's. Uh, Maybe just turn off the screen. Okay. <laughs> so it's on. Okay. Now it's off. Okay. On, off. And there are several things that we can do. Like, for example, um, I, oh, I don't know if I can turn off my camera. 
No, I can't. Oh, yeah, I can, but I'm scared too. I'm not going to. But if I, <laughs> you know, went like this, for example, it kind of looks like the camera is off. I turned off my camera. And then here, I turned on my camera. We can do this with our cell phones. We can do it with the laptop, the light as well. Turn on the light, turn off the light. Yep. Okay. Okay, good. Oh, we've got someone who got in trouble for this. Hang on, wrong comment. Uh -oh. I forgot to turn off the light last night. So I was scolded by my husband. Oh, <laughs> bad. <laughs> you should turn off the lights and save electricity. Okay, <laughs> so here we go. We got Mauricio. I put down my sandals uh, that were on the couch mm -hmm. instead of was. Uh, my wife argued about it. Okay, now we got a question here. Okay. Can we put the object between all of these phrasal verbs? For example, turn off the light, turn the light off. That's a good question. And this is probably one of the most difficult things about phrasal verbs. We have uh, three different categories. We have phrasal verbs that have to stay together. Mm -hmm. We have phrasal verbs that have to be separated with the object in the middle. And we have phrasal verbs that you can use either way. Mm -hmm. So how do you learn these? How do you learn these? This is um, probably one of the most frequent questions. And my theory is that you really need to hear these phrasal verbs, look at what you see, pay attention to the order. And really, until you see this phrasal verb used in a different way, just try to have a sense that this phrasal verb is familiar in this way. So if you hear, turn the light off, you're going to go, turn the light off. Okay, this is a separable phrasal verb. And maybe you don't know if you can say turn off the light. If, is that correct or incorrect? We don't know. But if you just listen to it, especially listening to the audio or reading it and paying attention to the structure, just try to develop a familiarity with it where it seems correct in this form or incorrect. And really, this is what it is, is developing an instinct for these phrasal verbs. You have to use it, use it, use it, pay attention, listen, listen, listen. And, you know, you have this instinct inside that says, I think it's turn the light off. I heard that in a movie once, or I heard Amy and Curtis say it once. Okay. Mm -hmm. And maybe you'll hear it again, like, I don't know, two months later, turn the light off or turn off the light. And you go, oh, you can use it both ways. Okay. And that starts mm -hmm. to sound familiar as well. So it's not an exact rule. Definitely you could um, have a list, like a spreadsheet and ooh, this one's separable. This one is non-separable. This one can be used both ways. But really, can we think through this many rules while we're speaking? I can't. No, no. I definitely we, yeah, we even have trouble with it. We gave a good example of this with the hat earlier. Um, so, yeah, I put, put. put on my hat or I put the hat on. Yeah, or put my on the hat, put, yeah, my hat on. Exactly. Yeah, it's hard for me to even think about the difference. So, in that case, yes, we can use both. <laughs> Same with the light. You can say turn off the light or turn the light off. Right no off. problem. But the, the best way to really get familiar with this is just to listen, be observant, and try to trust your instinct about, oh, that sounds right. That sounds wrong. Okay. And this is what native speakers do. They hear something and they go, no, that's wrong. But it's just because we don't hear it used in that way. So we have developed this sense of what sounds right and what sounds wrong. So it's um, a little bit tricky with phrasal verbs. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. It's kind of inevitable. You're going to make mistakes. But, you know, you've got to practice. You've got to try. And this is what we do with English. We practice. We get it wrong. We eventually learn the right way to say it, and then we can implement that into our speaking. So, okay, let's see. We've got a few more questions there's, here. There's a good question here that I noticed, Amy. Yeah. Uh, is it the same meaning switch when, off. You, when you switch off? That's S-W-I-T-H. Yeah. Uh, the word is like this, switch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And switch off, turn off, switch off the light. 
Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, we could use either or. Yeah, turn off the light or switch off the light. Exactly. So turn off the light, uh, switch off the light. Okay. Good. Okay. Now, what else do we have to do here? We've got, okay, we've got two more that we need to teach in this group of five. Okay. okay. So um, how about, this one was hard. I was like, what am I going to do <laughs> to teach this one? Okay. Uh, to turn <laughs> over. Okay. Turn over is uh, this action. Okay. So if you're cooking a pancake, for example, after one minute, you might have to turn over the pancake. And uh, Curtis, can you demonstrate turn over for us with something that you have? Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. So I've got this little object here. And it's a clip. This it's is a clip. a clip. Yeah. Okay. So. So I turned it over. You can see it sticks okay. out. The, this, oh, another phrasal verb there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This little, little piece of the clip. So in order to go like this, I had to turn it over. Okay, good. So the good. clip is mm -hmm. on the bottom. Okay, so that's turn over. And uh, let's see if I can show an example here. So again, with this plate, if it's like this, this is interesting, actually, describing the direction of the plate. So this is the plate on the ground, and it is right side up. Okay, Ooh. right side up. And if I want to turn it over, I totally used the wrong object here. This plate smells like cat food from last night. I don't really want to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> Ew, <laughs> this is a real legitimate plate. <laughs> so I'm going to have to wash my hands after. But um, this year, <laughs> right now, I have this plate upside down. Okay, so this is right side up, and this is upside down. And I've turned it over, okay, both ways. This is turnover, this is turnover. Okay, now we've got the last one of the group of five, which is turn around. Do you guys remember what around when it's used in a preposition? Do you remember what it means? How did we use it first? It was, uh, oh, to look around. Okay, so Curtis, what does look around look like? Okay, so this is around like this. Okay, right. so if we're going to turn around, I want you guys to imagine what Curtis is going to do in his chair. Okay, and you guys can type your answer here if you know what it is. Um, I don't know, <laughs> you might have to watch your cord, but can you show <laughs> us what turn around looks like? Okay, I'm going to take off my headset. And put them down. He took off his head headset and put it down. And now he is turning around and around and around. Okay, so he's turning around in his chair. Okay. Ooh, got a little Perfect. dizzy there. <laughs> did you realize you just did three phrasal verbs? Uh, like this, see? Watch. I took off my headset. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. And then I put it down. And then I turned around. There you go. <laughs> and then I put my headset back on. So oh, yeah, you put I, it I took on. it off. <laughs> I put it down. I turned around. I came back, put on my headset. And, uh, yeah. If you guys can understand what he was just explaining, good job, because that was a lot <laughs> of phrasal verbs. <laughs> what was interesting was the use of back. This is often used and it's not really like its own phrasal verb. It's like an addition to the existing action. Back usually means to return or yeah. Like for example, to come back home 
means that you left home and now you're returning to home. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we took off the headset and then we put it back on because that was its original location. So back will be like return to the original point. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we've got an example here from Mauricio. I turned over the glasses after washing them. And this is uh, so that the uh, glasses could dry or drain. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh -huh. Could drain off or dry. Look at that. Phrasal uh -huh. verbs are everywhere. <laughs> I did that yesterday. I, I washed yeah. the dishes here, so. I, I made sure to uh, turn the glass over so it could dry out. Dry out, exactly. <laughs> See? We don't even cannot, notice it. <laughs> oh, no. We cannot avoid using phrasal verbs in English. And if you do, it will sound a little bit unnatural. So really, really try to to use these phrasal verbs. Mm -hmm. So, okay, let's see here. We've got our quiz section. So um, who do you want to do the acting, Curtis? Do you want me to do the acting? Yeah. Yeah, okay. sure. Can, can you read the five phrasal verbs that we just did so I can type them in the chat here? Sure. Okay. Uh, put down. Turn off. Okay, one turn second. on. Put down. Uh, turn off. Okay, turn on. Mm -hmm. Turn over. Okay. And turn around. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now. I want you guys to guess which one of these phrasal verbs I'm going to be doing. I'm going to do three different actions. So if you want, you can um, say one and then the phrasal verb, two and then the phrasal verb, and three and then the phrasal verb in your answer here. So here we are. Does everybody know what this is? This is a remote control, okay? And this is the remote control for my air conditioner, which is actually set to 24 degrees, which is pretty cold for my room right now. But sometimes I get hot when I'm, you know, <laughs> talking to 28 people in a lesson. I've it's a little stressful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so right now I actually, what I want to do is I want to turn up the temperature because <laughs> it's a little bit too cold in here. But that's not one of the phrasal verbs. So right now, if I turn off, okay, this, what's going to happen? The temperature is going to go down. So, um, oh, I gave away the first one. So here, <sighs> action number one does not count. I'm going to turn off the air conditioner, okay? But here's the first activity. If it's 35 degrees outside, and I have a window that does not work very well for keeping the heat out, probably within about five minutes, I'm going to have to, okay, that's number one. What did I just do with this? Okay, now number two. Hmm. <laughs> I had to choose one prop <laughs> that I thought was really weird. <laughs> I'll tell you the story. This here is actually glass, solid, and uh, it's a, a hen. This is a chicken. And this is a gift I gave to my grandmother, and she loved hens and roosters and chickens. So I found this cute glass art chicken and I gave it to her. But um, after she passed away, my uh, my grandpa said, Amy, is there anything you want from, uh, you know, this room? And I saw this chicken and I thought, oh, that chicken is really cool. And I actually forgot that I gave it to her as a gift. So now I have the chicken. I took it with me back to Mexico. So here is my big fat hen. Okay, and because I want uh, to show you guys all of the detail of this, I'm going to go like this. Okay, so what am I doing with the chicken? Okay, this is number two. Please explain using one of the phrasal verbs that I had in the list there. And um, the last one, ah, right now, 
I still have the chicken. And unless I do this action, I have to hang on to the chicken. Okay. So I'm going to do that. Okay. Now the chicken is <clears throat> number three. So which one is this? We've got, I'm going to move this chicken over and put it <clears throat> there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So let's see, we've got uh, turn on. That's right. I turned on the air conditioner. Okay. And here uh, you'd have to turn it off. Exactly. If I want the temperature of the, um, the room to warm up, I'm going to have to turn off the air conditioner. Okay. We've got here, you turned on the remote control. Re uh, remote control, this will be. Okay, so turn on the remote control. And Birgit says, what the heck is that? <laughs> <laughs> that is a glass art chicken, Birgit. <laughs> okay, so let's see here. Uh, ooh, got comments coming in fast and various here. So, um, Wow, these guys are on it. This I know, cool. you're turning the hen around. Good job. Okay. And uh, we've got here, Amy is turning around the glass hen to show it to us. Well done, good example. Okay. Yeah, you're turning around the glass art chicken, or the glass chicken. <laughs> yep. <laughs> And Birgit, once she figured out what it was, <laughs> said turning around. Okay. <laughs> so great job, guys. You guys uh, definitely have this. So let's move on to uh, the last set here. Okay. So Curtis, this is, I think, a common one that most people know. Um, uh -huh. Let's see if they can guess. Can you do an action right now? And I want you guys to guess what Curtis is doing. You're going to do two actions, okay? So okay. show show us the next two phrasal verbs. Okay, here we go. All the way, all the way. Come on, oh, that, that was halfway. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so there, <clears throat> action okay. number one. Okay, and action number two. Okay. So what did what did Curtis just do here? Okay, there's that. And then number two. Okay. So uh, Curtis, stand up, almost. It's Curtis close, close. stands up, or Curtis is standing up. Okay. Okay. And what about the second one? Okay, that's stand up. What about this one? There we are. Sit down. Okay. And bonus points. Okay. Curtis sits back down. Okay. Ooh. Why is it sit back down, Curtis? Because it's the action before yeah. that I was doing before I stood up. Mm -hmm. So I was standing up mm -hmm. and then I sat, sat back down because exactly. it was what I was doing originally. Yeah, exactly. And here, uh, Samuel, Samuel says he has just stood up and sit down, almost uh, sat down. We're going to keep it in the past because these actions had already happened. Okay, perfect. Let's see here. We've got... <laughs> Okay. I don't know if we want to do both meanings of this phrasal verb. A lot of the phrasal verbs have multiple meanings, but we're trying to uh, just really focus on the movement ones to show you guys in the video. So, um, okay, the next one is get down. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, there are two meanings for this one. And um, that's why I chuckled. Yeah. But I'll, so, I'll stick to this one. <laughs> Oh, we can do both. Now we have to. So uh, can you show us? <laughs> Curtis, you're a good dancer. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew this was coming. Yeah. It's, it's, okay. it's the reason why I chuckled. Yeah. Here, hang on, hang on. Let me let me show the screen and I'll explain what, uh, 
what we're wanting to do here. Okay, we're gonna teach you get down, okay? And get down can mean to go to a lower position, okay, which we're also gonna show you, but this one has a different meaning and it can mean to dance, like to have mm -hmm. a really good time. So, you know, you might say, oh, um, I'm I'm getting down to this music or something. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I if Curtis, can you do some chair dancing for us? <laughs> Yeah, so if Curtis is, you know, grooving to the music, you might say, wow, he's really getting down, okay? But what about the phrasal verb that we want to teach for this lesson? Can you show us get down? Like if I said, Curtis, get down, what would you do? Really? Like I'd- Get down, would... like someone's coming in the room, they've got a gun, get down. <laughs> Okay, there we are. <laughs> okay, so he's on the floor. <laughs> okay. Don't worry, okay. guys. I'm okay. <laughs> Let me get back up again. Okay, so there we are. You just heard, we actually don't have this on the list, but get up again or get back up. Okay, so after you get down, you're going to get up again. And um, we've got two more. So, Curtis, do okay. you have? Um, I have something for fold over, but do you do you have an item you can use fold over to show them what it means? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, guys. Paper. So I've got a piece of paper here. I'm just going to fold it over from one side to the other. Yeah, so it's to fold like this. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is fold over. And <clears throat> something that's really, really common is if you have a book, okay, here. This book is in Spanish. I realized I don't have any English books around in the house. So oh, yeah. we've got Entre Limones, okay. And <laughs> I actually haven't read this book because I am not very good at reading uh, without falling asleep. But if I was at this point in the book and I wanted to save the, the page here. I would do this. I'm going to fold um, over the corner of the page. And then okay. that way I can see where I was in the book. Okay. So you both folded over the corner. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, to okay. fold over the corner. Okay. So uh, we're going to go here to fold over the corner of the page, okay. And then uh, the last one is to fold up. So fold up, this one isn't really intuitive, but what, what does fold up mean? Fold up means to take something that is unfolded or just in a, in a normal form. This one's a bit tricky to explain. No, uh, just show us, that's the oh, point. Okay. It's okay, hard so, to explain, so let's try. All right, I had this ready. I had this ready. So this is my towel that I had that I put on my head earlier. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to fold this up so I can put it away. Okay. Put away another phrase over. So we've we just I guess you could say fold over, but um, because we're going to keep going. Mm -hmm. Multiple times. So mm -hmm. I. I'm folding up my towel so I can put it put it away. So okay. this is I just unfolded mm -hmm. my towel and yeah. now unfold like now this. You can fold up your shirt, you can fold up all sorts of different uh, items like that. Exactly. So to fold up a towel. Okay. Fold up a towel. Okay, perfect. Now, we have to do a activity to try to guess the action that we just taught you. So, okay, I'm going to do one action and Curtis is going to do another one. This is like rock, paper, scissors. Who goes first? Ready, Curtis? Okay. Okay. Ready? Yeah, one, two, three. Oh, okay, again. <laughs> Okay, one, two, two three. Oh, you cheated. <laughs> okay, <I can. laughs> okay, okay, ready? How did I cheat? Okay. Okay. One. Okay. No, oh. okay, one. <laughs> can, can we count? Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. 
Yeah. One, One two, 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 three. Three. Again. Okay. okay. Again. We obviously think alike. Okay. One. Yeah. Okay. You two. count. Okay. One. <laughs> One. <laughs> okay. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Great minds think alike, everybody. This is what okay. 17 years together looks like. <laughs> okay, 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 okay good. Here Ready? we go. One, two, three. Oh, you win. Okay, you go first. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Which one are you going to choose from this list of five, which is stand up, sit down, get down, okay. fold over? Okay. Uh, yeah, there's okay. one more. Fold over, uh, fold up, and get down. Fold up, and fold over, and get there. down. Okay. All right. I'm going to do this one. Oh, yeah. You got to get the chin fold. That's. A very technical part it. of folding <laughs> clothing and towels. As I was full, yeah. Okay, and I want you guys uh, to tell me what I'm doing. Okay? So I just did something. So Curtis did one thing, and I did another thing. And I'm going to do a third thing. Okay. And then I'll do one after you. No, they have to nope. guess three. That's ah, it. Three, three ah. out of the five. And then we're going to do the big quiz where we Ooh. ask them to guess one of the 20. Okay, good oh, job. Oh. So first one here. And I'm going to wait for another answer. Okay, good. We've got fold up. Perfect. Action number one. Yes, he is folding up the towel. Perfect. <clears throat> While we're waiting for the answers for the action I just did, I'm gonna show you a, a different idea here. Oh. This is a towel and I don't know why, but I don't really fold my towels. I do this with them, okay? So if I go like this, hmm. okay. What are you doing? What am I doing? Does anybody have a guess for how we would refer to this towel that looks like a sushi roll? Mm, I miss sushi. Me too. Okay. So, Birgit says, Amy stood up. Okay. And we also got this. She sat back down again. Awesome. Mm. Okay. So, let's Choose see. Can you guys guess? I wonder. What is this action here? Do you guys know? This is really hard to demonstrate. One second. I need the <laughs> desk here. No, lower. There we are. Okay. So I have this towel here. Okay. It's like this. And then if we go like this, what is this action? This isn't a word I've taught you guys, but I'm doing something to this towel. Uh -huh. It's the circular movement. Okay, let's see. Oh, yes. Now, what is the preposition that we're going to use with this? Rolling. Rolling is correct. Okay. Do you think it's roll, I don't know, on, up, in, over? What do you think it is? Roll. Yeah, first answer, roll up. Good job. So this is rolling up the towel. And roll up or wrap up. Mm, I would say for wrap up, wrap up looks more like uh -huh. we're going to do this. And then it's going to kind of be like tight. Uh -huh. So we might wrap up some food or something, but it has some uh, secureness. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Amy is turning her towel over. That would look like this, turning over the towel. Okay. Ooh, okay. Great. Oh, and we're even going to learn some French here. I do not have an idea how to say that, but it looks like enroll. So I can see the logic there. 
Yeah, wrapping. Yeah, so it roll up the towel is the answer. Okay, Curtis, we're gonna spend the next five minutes doing actions and okay. uh, trying to get people to guess what they are. So can you choose one from the list? Any one of the, the 20? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got one. Okay. You guys <clears throat> guess, be quick, quick on the, okay. the answers here. Okay, here we go, here we go. Okay. I, I guess I just did two, but the yep. the original one was. Okay. <sighs> that might be with a different verb, but we know which one we taught you guys. So there are a couple of options for that that are occurring to me. Okay. And I'm going to choose one here. So. Okay. Okay. You guys remember my nice backpack that I have? Okay, what am I doing? So it was like this. Okay, good. Curtis is picking up or lifting up. Exactly. Cool. It's this one here. Good job. So pick up or lift up. Both are good. Okay, and... Uh, which action did I do? And Curtis, you choose the uh, next one you're going to act out as soon uh, as. Okay, okay let's I'm see. Go Here we go. This. Amy is taking out the mask. Perfect. Good job. Okay, Curtis, what's the next action? Okay. All right. Okay, perfect. So what is Curtis doing right now? And let me choose one from the list here. Okay. Okay, what did I just do with the fan? Mm. Okay, so we got it. Curtis is looking up. Perfect. And what did I just do with the fan? This is so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Turn off. Yeah. Okay. Woo. And here we are. We've got a question here. So turn off. I just turned off the fan. I've got a question. Oops. Wow, these comments are coming in so fast. I can't get back to it. Here we I are. Love the okay. <laughs> so looking up means searching. Yeah, you're right. You can look up information and that's another meaning of it. But it's really, really difficult to demonstrate with acting what looking up means. So that's why we're focusing on movement actions today. Okay, so I turned off the fan, which it might have been hard to hear, but right now, um, that's turning on the fan. <laughs> Turn off the fan. Okay, good. And uh, Curtis, can you choose one more? Yeah, I've got another one. Okay. 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 That one didn't count. <laughs> Okay, so he did two actions. If you want, you can use both. But this one here is the one that we're trying to guess. Oof, a little dizzy there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Shake off the Okay, car. good. We got uh, turn around. That's right. Curtis was turning around and <laughs> I just had something that fell off the desk fall off and it fell onto the floor okay <laughs> it wasn't the chicken was it <laughs> it was my cell phone actually oh. but it's okay it landed on the backpack luckily I had uh, these items here to protect it okay good now I need to choose an item let's see here um, I'm going to do, 
this. <coughs> Ooh. You guys can see that tag I've got on my my sun hat. Uh, it looks a little bit cooler when I don't have headphones underneath. But uh, this here, Surf Kelowna, this is actually a company that I go wake surfing with when I'm in Kelowna in the summer. Good friends there that mm -hmm. like to have a lot of fun. So I just did this action. Okay, this is the action to guess. Okay, and bonus points. Ooh. Okay, good. So we've got putting on your hat, exactly. Okay, Someone and after. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like this one. He turned around the chair along with his arms lifted up. Exactly, oh. he had his arms <laughs> lifted up in the air. <laughs> Okay. Awesome. And after the hat was gone from my head, what do we what do we need to say for that? Let's see here. Here we go. New comment. Take off. Good job, guys. Okay, let's try to make mm -hmm. Curtis act out all of these as quickly as we can for a quick review. Okay. What have we been doing Ooh. this whole lesson? We have been acting out different phrasal verbs. Okay. Mm -hmm. And look up. Look down. Uh, look around. Look over. Okay. Put on. We like our hats, don't we? <laughs> we could put a towel on our head, but <laughs> okay. Yes, <I> um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> you gotta leave that there now. Okay, okay so okay. Uh, take off. Okay, put in. Okay. Uh, take out. Okay, pick up. First, he has to put it down. Okay, now. <laughs> okay. Uh, put down. Okay, turn off. Okay, turn on. Okay, and then we've got uh, turn over. Uh... Okay, and turn around. Can you use that item to show turn around? Uh, that's a different item. Okay. Okay. So this is like to spin around or turn around. Okay. And s stand up. All right. Actually, it's better if I go like this. He's getting better at acting. Phrasal verb by <laughs> phrasal verb. <laughs> and sit down or sit back down. Okay. Get down. Or if you're a mom and you have a kid and they're climbing up on something, yeah, you might yeah, say, yeah. get down from there. Or I say it to my cats all the time, get down. Get down from there. Get Chester. down. Yeah, Chester. Chester. It's always yeah. Chester. Always okay. Chester. Okay. Fold over. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, and fold up. Here comes that chin action. I think Amy taught me the chin technique. So I'm just gonna fold this back it's like up. Your third hand while you're doing laundry. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. Okay. Awesome. And one of the other ones that we taught was with the towel to roll, roll up, up. Uh -huh. up the towel. Okay. Perfect. So, uh, did you guys learn something from this lesson, or do you feel more confident with using these phrasal verbs? As you can see, it was almost impossible for us not to use other phrasal verbs to describe mm -hmm. phrasal verbs. So it's really, really natural to be able to use them. So what we are um, doing on our website, for those of you that don't know, I know that we have a lot of members that are here. I can recognize the names and see them, but mm -hmm. the, uh, what we have on our website, we actually have a full course dedicated to phrasal verbs. And for those of you that like to listen to podcasts, we have two podcasts. We have mm. the Real English Conversations podcast, which is full of phrasal verbs because we use them in conversations. Like on average, we probably have 15 or 20 phrasal verbs in every single conversation without trying. Mm. And those are the ones used naturally with a high frequency. And the other phrasal verb podcast, it's called, I think, the English Phrasal Verb Podcast. This is one where I take a sample of our conversation lessons and find a part where we use some phrasal verbs, I explain what they mean, and then give you some time to practice by thinking of an example for yourself. So um, for people that decide that they want to, you know, improve all areas of their English, but maybe phrasal verbs especially, <laughs> okay? Um, we have a full course dedicated to learning phrasal verbs. It has, I think, 257 or 258 lessons right now. And mm -hmm. probably the funniest part where you guys can see how insanely creative, maybe insane, but how insanely creative <laughs> I yeah. am with trying to combine together a list of 10 phrasal verbs. We have phrasal verb stories. And intentionally, I've done this to try to create a visual image for you using these phrasal verbs so you can see the movie playing in your head and understand the context of it. And so this is something that's uh, really, really helpful. Curtis has something to say. Okay, guys. Uh, thank you. This was fun. Thanks for all your uh, comments and your tests and stuff like that. Um, you did very, very well. I have to go. I have to go and teach a, another lesson right now, a private yep. lesson. And mm -hmm. I would love to do the same for you guys. And you can go to realenglishconversations.com and feel free to book private lessons with me. I've got a 10% mm -hmm. discount and I would love to help you guys learn more of these phrasal verbs, expressions, and pronunciation. Your speaking pronunciation is probably your specialty, I would say, but yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Pronunciation, speaking fluency, con uh, confidence, listening skills, whatever. We both are mm -hmm. absolute experts in helping you guys to improve your speaking and your fluency. So, okay, we'll say goodbye to Curtis. Bye, Curtis. See ya. I got to take off. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to take off. <laughs> That's from, right. That comes from within the course, by the way. Yeah, okay, it does. bye, Curtis. Okay, take care. Okay. Okay, so you guys, uh, if you're interested in getting access to the phrasal verb course, all of the transcriptions, the examples, the phrasal verb stories, plus the other 13 courses that we have available, you're more than welcome to join us as a member. And we've got some cool things too that we do with our community. We have a um, WhatsApp speaking practice group where we post some activities for you guys to do a little bit of speaking practice and you can interact there uh, with the activities we post, but also also with other people. And uh, we actually, right now, we're having speaking practice sessions with our community. So um, twice a week, we get together and we have a conversation where you can join either Curtis and myself and up to six other members. I think we have it set at eight people per session, but generally only six people maximum will show up there. And we have a conversation topic just to give you guys an opportunity to practice with real people. And as long as people show up and we keep having members that are joining, we're going to continue to, to offer that service. It's just when nobody shows up and we reserve this special time from our schedule just for you for our community you know we we really want you guys to join us to practice speaking and um you know take your your english not just 
learning about it, doing some studying quietly without speaking, but to have an opportunity to talk with real people in spontaneous conversations. So I'm going to be doing another lesson next week. I'll try to keep the time to just an hour instead of an hour and a half, but um, I'm going to be reviewing our going to the doctor conversation. I was fighting with a bit of technical mm, things, trying to stream the audio from the browser and have my microphone volume at a certain level. But um, I think I've got it figured out. And for next week, I'm going to go through one of these conversation lessons, uh, the one about going to the doctor. It has a lot of phrasal verbs in it, but also we can talk about the, the different things that we're explaining and my goal is to show you how much there is to learn from studying authentic, natural conversations like the ones that we have on the website. It's not just for pre-intermediate or intermediate people. Uh, pre-intermediate or intermediate is going to be really helpful for you to build vocabulary and the right type of vocabulary. The vocabulary that is high frequency used by native speakers, which in turn is going to help you to understand more of what you hear. And when you're speaking, you're going to sound natural, not like a uh, I don't know, scientific research paper or a textbook, for example, you're going to sound natural because you've been studying and learning a regular type of vocabulary. But um, yeah, I mean, the it's, it's crazy how much you can learn from conversations. When you're an advanced speaker, it's also useful because you know, you're fighting against the natural translation that kind of happens from your own language and trying to sound more natural like a native speaker. Well, what's the best way of doing that? The best way is to take some time, slow down, look at what people are saying and how they structure it and do some of the speaking activities that we recommend to help you to practice your speaking in that way. So anyway, anybody, honestly, that is looking for real communication with speaking and listening skills, I think that um, a lot of our mem members, um, you know, can say how awesome it is to be a member, and I'm sure that they'd love to have you to join our community and to participate with us. The more, the merrier. But um, yeah, so head over to our website. You can use the coupon code that we have active right now for the um, the coronavirus. Everybody's stuck at home, <clears throat> and it's stay at home. That's the coupon code. Stay at home everybody, please, so that we can get this virus under control. And um, during that free time that you have, hopefully you can enjoy some of our member activities, lessons, and courses that we have online. Join us in the WhatsApp group and in the conversation practices that we have. So I'll see you guys for next week. Thank you so much for sticking around. I can see we still have 24 people here, which is great. I hope you learned a lot and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.